For many of us, these past two months have been an opportunity to discover new talents that we didn't know we had. Some people have tried to be barbers, giving haircuts to their children. Some others painted their bedrooms. My wife and I actually did that. It was a lot of fun. Home remodeling, gardening, cooking, all kinds of different things that we have tried because we were stuck at home. And yet, as much as we are proud of ourselves or not, Shavuot is coming. Shavuot, that is this one holiday that we are, us men at least, in shul all night, learning Torah, reading the Tikkun. And it's hard to imagine how this year, for still many of us, our Bateknesiot are closed and we are going to have to deal with a night learning at home with our kids. And the next morning, as we were standing last year in Aseret Adiberot or sitting, how are we going to do that? This awe, oh, this feeling of closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as we are listening to the Ten Commandments, the day we receive the Torah is supposed to be at home. Such a difficult challenge again. So I want to take you a little bit deeper into the dimension of Matan Torah. What is exactly happening on Matan Torah? We commemorate the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave our ancestors a Torah that he continues to give us every single year. Where did he give us the Torah? Everybody knows the answer. Har Sinai. Now let me ask you, do you know why do we call this mountain Har Sinai? What is this unusual, uncommon name, Sinai? What is that? And Hachamim tell us that Har Sinai actually was exactly the same spot that HaKadosh Baruch Hu revealed himself to Moshe Rabbeinu a few years before he took the Jews out by the Sene. Sinai and Sene are exactly the same. In fact, scientists have discovered that in the stones of Har Sinai, of the mountain, when you crack a stone, you could see inside the shape of the bush, the famous Sene, the burning bush that HaKadosh Baruch Hu revealed himself from to Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, one more thing, one very important detail. The same way that this bush was burning, let's remember that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the Torah in a mountain that was Har Sinai Ashan Kulo. The mountain was on fire. Smoke was coming out. And we have to finally find the answer for that question. What is the secret of the burning bush? What was the message of the burning bush? Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveal himself to Moshe Rabbeinu in such fashion? And why did he have to give the Torah to the Jewish people also in a mountain that was on fire? So if we analyze what happened in those two meetings, Moshe Rabbeinu and Am Israel, each one in their own time, there was one common point that happened in, the, in that place. And the common point was the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu revealed to Moshe Rabbeinu, let me show you what you are made of. You are the Mashiach. You are the savior of the Jewish people. And Moshe Rabbeinu said, no, I'm not. Who am I? Take my brother, take someone else. And Hashem said, you are the one. You can do it. It took seven days to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to convince Moshe Rabbeinu until he finally accepted that mission. And it took also seven weeks to let the Jews know that they could do it, that they were also the chosen people, that they could accomplish 613 mitzvot. It was possible. They had it. This revelation in the Sene, by the bush, and by Matayan Torah in Har Sinai, is that common denominator between those two events. And the fire, the idea of the burning bush, the idea of the burning mountain, was just a mirror effect. Moshe Rabbeinu was looking at himself. 
the Jews were looking at themselves. And Hashem says, you are an ish, you are an esh, you are made of fire. Is fire good or not good? That's completely up to you. You could either decide to destroy and to burn. The worst catastrophes happen with fire. Or you're going to use this fire inside you to provide heat, to provide warmth, to cook food that is unedible, to bring light. This is good. You have to make that decision. Sinai and Sene have also the same letters than Nisayon. Nes Nisayon. You know why? Because there was a test. Nisayon is that moment of challenge where we have to make a decision what kind of person we are going to choose to be. What we are truly made of. And this year, Shavuot in Har Sinai takes a very, very deep meaning because we are being tested again. What we are made of. Are we going to have an amazing holiday? Are we going to be able to receive the Torah again? And I think that we have to look around us and be inspired by people who decided to step it up, to step up their game. And I refer to school teachers. Schools today have become food distribution centers. Doctors, nurses, Hatzalah first responders, shuls, rabbis, yeshiva that became masks and gloves distribution centers, chesed organizations that are all made, by the way, of volunteers. They stepped up their game and they said, I am going to let my fire out. I am going to use my potential and I'm going to say, I can do it. If these people did it, they are just like you and me, then we can also do it. And instead of going with the attitude of a tikkun where it's not going to happen this year, we're going to have to wait till next year. I am urging you, please make an effort. Last year, you were able to go to Bet Knesset, Bet Midrash, and learn from your rabbi, go to one or two shiorim, do the tikkun. This year, take your son and say, hey, we're going to do it, you and me. I'm going to take care of you. I am sure we're going to make something great out of this night. And maybe, maybe you will also discover a new hidden talent that you didn't know before. And you will be Ezrat Hashem succeed at it. And on this, I wish you all, Hag Sameach, enjoy your families, and stay safe.